Hey, welcome back to the Build It Basement. Today, really excited to talk about the Big Tree Tech Pico. Now, I was sent this Pico for free by Big Tree Tech, but I'm not getting paid for this video. So, my payment is getting this for my Voron 0.1 build, which I already had a SKR Mini for, but Pico sounds better than Mini to me. Let's jump right into it. All right, so what do you get? You get a twist and twirly box here. The SKR Pico, very nice, very nice box, very nice design. Um, I don't know, everybody is doing things with their boxes these days. And I think that started with Apple back with the uh, iPhone way back in the day, um, but um, not too shabby. Got a little pull tab right here. We're gonna go ahead and pull that guy right out. There we go. And inside the box, first thing we find is a business card. Kind of a different shape, I think, but uh, business card nonetheless for Big Tree Tech, uh, giving us a 3D barcode or for uh, their website as well as motherboard group and their GitHub and email and after service center support. So definitely looking to keep track of their customers and help out when they can. Um, speaking of that, the Git for Big Tree Tech. Uh, all the way around if, and if you're not familiar with big tree tech they make tons and tons and tons of stuff um, for uh, 3d printer enthusiasts all the way from uh, boards to drivers to uh, displays to full-on printers so lots of stuff from big tree tech let's see let's get into this real quick all right so one of the things i wanted to mention and bring up was the fact that Big Tree Tech has these things on sale right now, which is the primary reason why I was doing this video now, as opposed to waiting till I actually got to do it in the printer. Um, so right now, if you get into their website, you will note that you can pick up a SKR Pico, which is this guy right here. This is the one we're going to start unwrapping for $37.88. I don't have any discount codes or anything like that. Like I said, they did provide the board to me, but they're not paying me for the video. Uh, if I do get anything, I will put in the comments down below. Uh, so do keep an eye on there and do look down there. I eventually might get something, we'll see. Uh, but it looks like everything's on sale now that now that I look at this. The uh, SKR Mini's on sale. So if you are building a Voron Zero, you have your SKR Mini, you have the Pico board if you want to do that. Uh, let's see what else I have here. SKR2, even the octopus. Wow. Let's see the octopus. Yeah, about, about $13 off that. And yeah, quite a bit here. Wow, kind of kind of impressed. All right, back to the fun stuff. So inside the box of this little marvel, we have our board in the quintessential static free bag. We have some jumpers and screws for mounting. We have a USB type C uh, to USB cable. That could be for flashing. Uh, this does have a bootloader mode on it, so that's nice. Uh, we have a jumper, and if I believe what I've seen, this jumper will allow us to plug it into the big tree tech Pico and uh, basically into the headers of a Raspberry Pi to power the Raspberry Pi and talk to that via uh, UART. So we have that. And of course we have our rubber ducky. And if you're not familiar with Big Tree Tech, they pack a rubber ducky in with everything. I don't know why. I don't have time to look it up. I'm sure there's a reason for it. All right. So while we're doing this, take a look at that. It really is a good deal on that. Um, so actually let's get this camera shot right here. Let's look at what we have right here. Let's look at size uh, for rough judgment size. If you have a Raspberry Pi, it is about the same size as your Raspberry Pi. And when I say about, it is probably, oh, maybe five millimeters bigger on the width this side uh, as the length is pretty much exactly the screw holes are a dead match between the two so you could stack these if you'd like to there's other videos about that and um, i'll have 
some links to those as well. Um, but very stackable, very usable. It's also stackable if you wanted to use that with a Pi Zero, which I don't have one out right at the moment, but if I did, um, and for those numbers, people out there, width, total, uh, including connectors, you're looking at roughly 88, 89 millimeters. And on the narrow side, you're looking at about, we'll call it 63 to 64. And your total depth, or maximum depth, we'll call it. We'll go right to that screw right there to the heat sinks. Well, 13 and a half. So very, very compact board. All right, so you got that, got that, got this. Here we go. And I printed this off just as a visual for me and for everybody um, to kind of go over what you have here. And actually, let me zoom over to this camera right here. And let's do that. So we can see what we have. All right, so it might be a little bit small, but it'll work. On the right hand side here, which is probably your left hand side, you have your pin connectors for your power, which this board will take 12 or 24 volts. Uh, you have your connection here for your hotbed and then one for your hot end. Uh, you also have a connector here if you ever chose to use it for laser. Uh, so this thing can have freaking lasers. Uh, you have your USB type C on here. You have a very small fuse, but is serviceable. That fuse does come out. Uh, let's just make sure. Yep, that fuse does come out. So it is a serviceable fuse. Uh, they probably could have done a little automotive fuse, but they were trying to keep everything really small. Uh, before we get into the rest of the side connectors, you have connections on the top here for a BL touch or, a induct or an inductive probe. Um, you have jumpers here for essentialist homing. You have a bootloader jumper. You have connectors here for RGB LEDs. You have a reset button right here. And you have a large heat sink for your steppers. Uh, steppers underneath here, uh, so they're not changeable. They are soldered right to the board, so you can't change those out readily. Uh, but they are TMC 2209s, which is the common stepper to use these days. And there's four of them on the board. Uh, do note there are five connectors here. Your Z is tied together, but there are two Zs on here. Uh, so you have your extruder, your X, your Y, Z1, and Z2. And again, Z1 and Z2 are tied together. Uh, on the far end side here, you have a connector for your Raspberry Pi. You have three fan connectors. You have your thermal probe for both your bed and your hot end. You have an X stop, a Y stop, and a Z stop. What did we miss? It's a lot of stuff to talk about right there, huh? Now, let's go into the specifications a little bit. Let's bring up this real quick. Where is my bench cam? There we go. All right, so I don't know if you can see it on here. Um, pretty hard to see it's pretty small zoom right in there there we go all right so right here if you look really closely you might see and recognize that logo that is a raspberry pi or a pi logo on there uh, and that is symbolic to the fact that that chip is actually manufactured by pi uh, on here you have the rp2040 microcontroller which is a microcontroller again made by raspberry pi it's a 32-bit arm Cortex with 133 megahertz. It is overclockable. Uh, I haven't looked into it much, but I do know you can overclock a 2040 microcontroller. So um, there might be a way to overclock that if you want to, but I don't think you need to. Um, that chip is capable of having up to 30 GPIO pins and two UARTs. Um, as for functionality of this board, it does require you to connect it to a Raspberry Pi. Um, and as of when I'm recording this, as far as I know, it will only run Clipper. Uh, so if you do want to run um, some type of Marlin on here or something, you're going to be out of luck until somebody gets that going. Uh, but there are folks trying to do that as we speak. All right. Uh, let's see here. We already talked about a bunch of great stuff about this thing. So let's compare it to some other boards. All right. Put this aside. So right here we have the Pico, and for comparison's sakes, I have an SKR, an unopened, 
Mini version two. This is the one that actually came with my kit uh, for the printer for my V01, uh, my LDO kit. So in size, we're looking at probably, and yeah, we're probably about 60, maybe 70% the size of that board. And this is a very small board, very compact board. Um, so not too shabby there, kind of neat. Uh, okay, so major differences between this board and that board. This board does have an SD card slot on it, which you do not have on the Pico. Uh, but if you are familiar and if you have used Clipper before, once you're able to send files and do modifications using a browser on just about any device, um, you're not going to use an SD card to put files on your printer. It's not the best way. So what else is different? Oh, Fuse, automotive style Fuse. Uh, old style USB uh, micro USB on here as opposed to USB type C that we have on the newer board uh, the arrangement of the headers I do like them better on the Pico so they did do quite a bit for the design uh, on the mini they don't even all face the same direction you actually have things facing in two different directions um, so you have that uh, no display there's a display on here there's no display on this one uh, display port on the Pico whereas there is one on the mini um, again, steppers are built onto this one as well. So you have that on both. And oh, that's it real quick. Let's compare them both now to one of the largest boards you can get. This is the Octopus. So <laughs> the Octopus is roughly the size of both these boards together. No, um, it is, but no. Uh, on the octopus and this is kind of going really far out there in terms of smallest to largest um, But you can compare the two here and this is a league of its own in terms of what you get uh, This is more in line with like a spider from Fizek, um, but just wanted to show you a comparison of the size um, Versus functionality so on a board like this you do get more functionality you do get more places for steppers uh, you, you can control more motors on this than you can with this card uh, you could do a lot more with this in general it has an ethernet port on it uh, two usb ports on it where's uh, yeah, multiple fuses on here fuses for not only the power but other uh, portions of the higher voltage ends of things so that's that all right what else what else what else about this pico um so in general, the Pico was manufactured specifically for printers that aren't using a ton of steppers. You're limited again down to your extruder stepper, 1X, 1Y, and then you actually have 1Z motor. I mean, there's two Z ports on here, but in actuality, those are tied together. So um, if you're using something with a lead screw or two lead screws and they're tied together, you can do that. But you're not going to be able to do any uh, tramming of, of your uh, bed using this particular board. So all in all, uh, for the value specifically, I'll get back to this real quick, the value, let's see here, the screen. Um, you know, for $37 or even the $55 that you can buy this for on Amazon, um, that's a hell of a value. So if you are sourcing parts for your printer, I do suggest you take a look at the Pico. Um, it seems like a really nice board. I'm gonna have additional videos coming up when I do start to put this inside of my Voron 0.1 printer. Uh, gonna go over and do the complete clipper configuration installation on this board, hooking it up to a Raspberry Pi. So if you do like this content, if you do like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and uh, don't miss out on my next video. See you later.